Okay, everybody, here we go. We have been learning how to compare fractions, and now we're going to use a whole bunch of those strategies that we've learned to order a list of fractional amounts. Um, and here's a list right here of four fractions, four fifths, one half, one third, and six tenths. And we're going to order those in the order of least to greatest. And I like to record that when I'm asked to order numbers from least to greatest. I want to record it so I don't forget. I want to keep that in my mind because sometimes they'll ask us to um, order from greatest to least. And you want to be super clear about which of those orders you're doing. Anyway, sometimes when I have a list like this, I'll just start by comparing these fractions, each of them to the benchmark fraction one half. Um, and that gives me some good data, you'll see. Four fifths is more than half, and I like to record that and just indicate it with a little M for more. One half obviously is a half. One third is less than a half, and six tenths is more than a half. So with that one step, I've already learned a whole lot of information. Um, I know that my absolutely least or smallest amount is gonna be one third. I know that the next one will be half, less than half, and then half. And so my battle is really just between six tenths and four fifths. And I can see that I can easily make an equivalent fraction for four fifths that has tenths in the denominator, denominator. So and that will be eight tenths. So I found out that four fifths is actually a larger amount than six tenths by the information I got with this equivalent fraction. And here's a little bit of a tricky part. When I go to put them on the where I've ordered them, I need to be sure I use the original fraction, not the equivalence, equivalent fraction. So the next largest one would be 6 tenths, and the largest or greatest one of all is going to be 4 fifths. And that's one way you can order a list of fractions. All right, this time we're going to order these fractions, and they should have commas in between because it's a list, right? We'll order these from greatest, biggest amount to the least amount because every once in a while that will happen. They'll ask you to do that. Seven, let's go ahead and I'm going to compare them to a benchmark fraction first to kind of clear the way and put them in categories to start with. Seven tenths is more than a half. Two six is less than a half. Four fifths is more than a half. And four eighths is a half, right? It's an equivalent fraction that means half. So my least, I know the least, I know the half. So the least is here, right? So I'm gonna put my least or my smallest one there. And then half is four eighths. And it feels a little bit strange to do it in this order, but you will be asked to do that sometimes. And we have to be ready for it. Four eighths is out. So the battle is between four fifths and seven tenths. I know I can make an equivalent fraction that has tenths in the denominator pretty easily. 8 tenths, so I know that 4 fifths is the same as 8 tenths, so it's a battle between 8 tenths and 7 tenths, so 8 tenths is greater, 7 tenths is smaller, since I'm going from smallest to greatest, I think I'll put my smaller one there, 7 tenths, and then I have to be careful at the end, the largest amount, fractional amount in my list is 4 fifths, and I like to cross them out once I use them so I don't get confused. All right, last one. Let's try this one. Um, we're going to order these from least to greatest. Two fourths, that's half. Three fifths, that's more than half. Four tenths, that's less than half. Two thirds, that's more than half. One and a half thirds would be exactly halfway. Uh, two and a half fifths would be a fraction that represents exactly half of whatever that whole is. So this is some pretty good information. Uh, my greatest, I've got half and less than half. So I know my least amount is going to be four tenths. My next greatest amount will be two fourths. And these are both more than a half. So it's pretty much my battle between three fifths and two thirds. What I'm seeing here is that I can't easily um, convert these fractions or make an equivalent fraction that has five times, five divided by something will never get me three or thirds. Um, three times something, three divided. So these will never, I can't just easily make one of them an equivalent fraction 
to make a denominator or numerator match. So this is just the double whammy, right? We have to make two. And this doesn't happen often, but I want us to be prepared in case it does so that you know that you have strategies to handle anything that comes your way. So let's see, um, for three fifths and two thirds, I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna make two new fractions, an equivalent for each one with a denominator that they can both multiply to. And I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'll move it over here. So I want to have room to make my equivalent fraction. I see that. What number? What is the multiple of both five and three? Well, 15, right? They can both, three can multiply to get 15 and five can multiply with another factor to get 15. And that's going to give me the information I need to create some new equivalent fractions. So five times three is 15. So I would, I'm going to multiply this one by three over three. Three times three is nine. So I've learned that three fifths is the same as nine fifteenths. And two thirds, three times five is 15. So I know I'm gonna be multiplying this whole fraction by five over five. Three times five is 15. Two times five is 10. So what did I just learn? Which one is larger? Two thirds or three fifths? Remember those are the original fractions we're working with. We got some great data here. I now know that two thirds is the same as 10 fifteenths, three fifths is the same as nine fifteenths. So I now know that two thirds is larger than three fifths. So I know three fifths will come next and two thirds will be the largest one. So try that out. You'll get lots and lots of practice comparing as you order.